Mr. Portman tricked Miss Bard and gave entry into my office. Now you're just leading the argument. You still don't have any actual proof, you know. If you could please go along with my hypo hypothetical scenario for now, Mr. Portman. Wonderful. Correct use of hypothesis. In the end, if you really are innocent, then you should have nothing to worry about. Uh, I need to steal water from Tenho now, because my throat is being very, very annoying. And I am out of water in my own bottle. Now then, returning to my scenario, Mr. Portsman was about to steal, uh, out to steal something from me. <laughs> yep. Which is why he checked my safe, safe and ransacked my shelves. This was the first time. So then, uh, this would be when the files were put back in the wrong order, right? Correct. And then, just when he was about to look somewhere else, who should walk in with his own partner, Mr. Faith? Um, wait, Saturday with a voice breakdown? Um, oh yeah, doing. Yes, I will. Wait, you're streaming on, sun on Saturday? Is that, is that it? Ah, like that. <laughs> Just checking. But why did Mr. Faith come into your room, sir? You probably had business with Mr. Portman, which is exactly why he was in the air. That's when he noticed sounds coming from my office, I would guess. Oh! Because you were supposed to be a Ray, right? And he was a thought it was odd, so he came to check in his off into the office to check out. Uh Okay. Well I'm gonna check in right now and see what you have. Oh yes. Definitely. Ten, ten ho, come here. These are yours. Cute. And while you're doing that, I'm going to you here a bit. While you decide what knows. Okay, that after your stream is done. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Correct. And as a detective, that was the right thing to do. But, when he came in, he found his own partner standing there. Because it was Mr. Portman, Mr. Faith probably let his own guard down. <laughs> okay, Maya, take care and have fun. But Mr. Portman was not so merciful as to let him leave alive. He waited for a chance and stole Mr. Faith's gun from him, and then... He killed him. He silenced Mr. Faith for catching him in the act of stealing. This was the moment in which the first shot was fired. The one that landed in my files. Following that, Mr. Portman left the, uh, wiped the gun down and left it behind as he made his exit. He could afford to do that, because he had also left behind the fake dying message. You're such a complicated troublemaker, you know that? Well, if things are as simple as that, then it all will be solved. However, there was yet another visitor in my room, and this is where it all gets complicated. There was another visitor, sir? And this other person's objective was also to steal something from me. Now then, even after Mr. Portman left, the door to my office remained unlocked. 
However, this small visitor had no way of knowing that, and so they stole the master key to the room from the security guard's room, and then entered my room and searched through my shelves. This was the second time they were disturbed, and it seemed that the thief found their grand prize. The stolen uh, old file, right, sir? Correct. Only uh, just as about the thief was about to leave with the file, I appeared. The thief then threatened me with this, their own gun and made their escape. The second bullet was fired during that brief encounter. <laughs> time skip. Yeah, time just disappears whenever you play these games. So, the shells were getting getting messed up twice in the two bullets. Well, all because two different people were doing those things at two different times. Precisely. So, now do you see Mr. Portsman? The person I met was just a thief. And was not, in fact, Mr. Faith's killer. Your alibi for the time frame in which I ran into the other person is now irrelevant. Because we now know that the murder took place during the first culprit's vi visit. <laughs> What's so funny, pal? Absolutely splendid. Your scenario ex explains everything. Of course it does. It's Mr. Edgeworth after all. But, you know, it still doesn't change the fact that it's all circumstantial. Supposing if, and that's a big if, your theory is right. That's all wrong. Your hypothesis, you imbecile. I do love the fact that this, like, it shows its ignorance. Still, that makes me annoyed. It would re indeed render my alibi, which you have um, has withstood scrutiny, mind you, irrelevant. But there is still one defining point of your argument. You have no evidence. For which you have no evidence. This is supposition that I was the first visitor. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, we can't let him get away with that, sir. But he has a point. I have absolutely no proof at this point. Don't say that, sir. I don't believe this. I don't believe any of this. Don't worry, Maggie. I'll do something if I must. <laughs> this day, this this like playthrough is just gonna be pigs fangirling over Ed Edgeworth. I love it. <laughs> You know something? I find it your attitude to be somewhat peculiar, Mr. Edgeworth. If the person you just met was a plain old thief, then why is that person not your main suspect? That is, if your theory is correct. That she thief you ran into should really be your, be your real suspect, wouldn't you say? We should be out there looking for that thief right now. That might still be in Iran. I hate to repeat myself, but I've already said I was in my training in my room. And when Jim came to deliver some evidence, I was down at criminal affairs. So, I can't be expected to know what happened here or after I left. Yep, the music is amazing in this game. This game has amazing music. So, you think we should be out there looking for the thief? Uh, of course. Uh, now is the time to be wasting t wasting time on dead end discussions. I don't think it's all that dead ended. I find your alibi to be fascinating. Let's continue where we left off, shall we? I just love that. It's like he's just chills, like fascinating. <laughs> I know he's lying. I know he was here at the scene of the crime. I just have to find a way to prove it. <laughs> oh. So, do we I have any of the questions? Oh, yes, this one. Mm. 
the cap to actually... I have to press him a little bit, but... <laughs> Actually, no, I wouldn't. Why not? It's elementary. The dying message, of course. Mr. Face Killer was very clearly left those letters on the spine of those files. And it was after they were there, the thief uh, were on there, the thief stole one of them. You mean the old files, right? And that's how we also know the letters themselves were in a, was a setup, and not from Mr. Faith. If the thief was a killer, do you think they would try to undermine themselves? Uh, maybe the killer just didn't think of that either? Uh, yeah, that's the, yes, that was be it. Maybe, just maybe, um... Um... Keep on pressing. Once escaped, I highly doubt the thief would linger nearby. Well, you never know. Maybe they didn't, didn't get what they were really after. Oh, you talk like you know quite a bit about this thief. It's nothing like that. I, am, I don't know when I have any idea about anything after all. Yeah. And that says something, like, the spirit medium has the most sane hair. <laughs> but beads in her hair isn't really all that outrageous, you know? Heck, it could also be- those beads are probably, like, just on some sort of uh, hairband, you know? Or a hair tie, rather. But according to Mr. Faith's note... Hold on, I thought we already cleared that up. Jimmy said left Jim had left a note for me early in the evening. If you have some proof he left at a different time, say, just before he was murdered... I don't have any, no. You see, so I insist again that I was in my office the entire time. Why did you go there with Jim, Mr. Faith? Ah, that's because you said he was tired and was going to take a quick nap. You know, those sofas in the hallway, he likes to sleep on those. It's one of his habits. And what of the evidence he brought? There were things related to yesterday's case. Just two items, a gun and a pendant. Ah, that's like... Interesting. This piece of testimony seems to be cr too crucial to let slip through the cracks. Objection! Only two pieces of evidence. <laughs> I believe the proper phrase here is you fail. Excuse me? You fail as a prosecutor, Mr. Postman. As you intend to keep hi evidence hidden from me. What are you talking about? I haven't hidden anything from you. Well, here's an, a piece of piece I think you should read. Carefully. Ah, it says that Mr. Faith was bringing three pieces. Yes. And this is the victim's real dying message to you, Mr. Portsman. He... I can't believe to get tripped up by simple arithmetic! Where is the missing piece of evidence? I... it's... Uh, you have it, don't you? Only the guilty would make such a face. Detective Gumshoe. You don't have to say it, sir. I'll pat the guy down from head to toe. Don't come any closer, I'm warning you! This is all part of the investigation, pal. So don't even think about stopping me. No! Hey, what's this? He had this on him, sir. 
Despite what you said, it appears that you do have something to hide. But why would he hide something like that? <laughs> There's only one reason to why anyone would hide evidence of this caliber. Because he would unequivocally point that person himself as a real killer. Let's examine this videotape in a bit more detail. For the section of the tape that will drive the last nail into his coffin. Um, there we go. Ah, that's blood, isn't it? Yes, and I believe this is the good prosecutor. Was is what the good prosecutor was trying to hide from us. This blood is still fresh. You mean it might be Detective Fate's blood? No, you got it all wrong. <laughs> Normal denial can save you. We have to run a blood test on this to find the truth. You told us you had received evidence from the victim earlier. Now, you will tell us when and how did the victim's blood find its way onto this video. Yeah, it's totally suspicious. Was it at the moment of his death? Did Detective Faith have his, this videotape on his personage when you killed him? You know very well there's no way to prove that. Not even if we were to examine this tape for prints. If I had to take a guess, I'd say the only ones here would be on, on here would belong to the murderous you and Mr. Faith. No! Impossible! I am... I... <laughs> oh. He swallowed his medal. Because why not? been placed under arrest for the murder of Detective Buddy Faith, sir. Very good. And the result of the back from the labs in the text. Lab text on the tape turned out to be real solid, sir. <laughs> yes, because Ace Attorney. The blood work uh, came back and there was definitely Mr. F uh, Mr. Faith's blood on there. And as a bonus, they were able to lift a few prints uh, of Mr. Faith's fingerprints as well. Thank you so very much, Mr. Edgeworth. I still can't believe I got to see your cool deduction skills outside a courtroom. <laughs> I'm impressed beyond words, sir. It was nothing. I just saw you got caught up in a murder in my office. Please, accept my apologies. Oh, it's nothing really compared to what I've been through, I mean. But can say I consider myself lucky that it was only a burglary and a murder this time, sir. If it had been a hold-up or a hostage situation, I'd have thrown my hair so hands in the air. I think I'm finally rising up from the goddess of misfortune to just an unlucky person. Something tells me that we should have hired a different person for security detail. You know something, sir. That Portman... Then this, of course, was one corrupt prosecutor. And what would you say was corrupt? Well, I heard there were all sorts of suspicious... a uh, number of suspicious things related to his court cases. There's even some rumors about how he, the, some of the evidence he used as forged, sir. Forged evidence, huh? They say he even decided not to prosecute a few cases for some really vague reasons. Oh, that guy's a complete disgrace to his entire profession. We never did get around to asking for what his reason was for breaking into my office. Yeah, whenever we got to near that topic, he kind of just climbed up. Although, we can be pretty certain that it was to steal something. This is not speaking between me and you, sir, but there's a rumor that some huge organization is involved behind the scenes. Oh, well, well. 
With Mr. Portman not willing to do, divulge anything, it certainly lends credence to that rumor. It would seem that we haven't heard a lot of this. Huh? Mr. Mr. Portman isn't the bad guy? I didn't say that, but rather that there are still more mysteries for us to solve. For example, we still haven't figured out the significance of this piece of evidence. Take that! The person who stole this file, the other villain of this night, of the night. Yeah, I wonder who it was. Hello there, Quesgotlu. Oh, hello there as well, Kalkun Wedwinger. <laughs> You're all catching the tail end of it. Because we're almost finished here for today, but thank you. And what happened to the stolen pages? I wonder, who in the world was it that held me up at gunpoint? Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Yes? I came across this while I was processing your officer earlier, sir. This card... What is it, sir? Is that a bird or something on there? It's not just any bird. This is the mark of the raven. The three-legged raven. Even you should know what this is, detective. Oh, it's about that thing, isn't it? The, the great thief everyone is talking about. Yes, it's the mark of the great chief, Yatagarasu. Under the mark of the legendary bird, the Yatagarasu is a noble to the end, a modern Robin Hood. Labelled mysterious and phantom-like, the Yatagarasu appears and vanishes at will. Though we don't know much about the three thieves also to gold, we do know the targets. The Yatagarasu likes to find and make public evidence of corrupt dealings of all sorts. The theft thief, the theft is always performed in silence with perfect, with all, always with perfection. Once a target is chosen, no dramatic calling card or announcement is sent forth, referring to um, to um, mask the mask. <laughs> I love it. The references are amazing. Um, I I have not written any science articles today. No. The only uh, science article I've written is. Uh, was my were my two uh, theses, my master's and bachelor's theses. Thesis I. <coughs> so uh, doesn't ring a bell, unless that, um, unless a reference to that one was put somewhere else. But I don't think there's no like image of me anywhere in that sense. Um. He is the uh, sort of villain in the first game, the first Ace Attorney, but this is like several years later in the... Uh, yeah, it's a long story. Um, but like, if you're interested and don't want to play the games yourself, you can either look at my archive uh, on YouTube, on my same username, uh, or you can look at the anime or the manga of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. It's all there. <laughs> mm. uh, give me a second here. Uh, okay. Uh, instead, the chosen corporation is infiltrated without even the target noticing. Hmm? What? <laughs> Suddenly Tenho, yes, she uh, she had to give us a kiss here. Um some days later the evidence that was found and sent out to the mass media. 
along with this single card. Although it has been a while since Yata Garasu's last appearance. Hey, Miss Wedgeworth, something's written on the back. Watch, let me see. It's the location of where the theft put, put the stolen files. Oh, my condolences there. Still. 52 is still a... Uh... Wait, co-worker. Yeah. Oh. Uh... Hopefully your uncle gets better. Because uh, that's like the diabetes thing, if I have read everything correctly, is like very exposed. But I hope your uncle gets better. Um... Yeah, let's see, <clears throat> let's see, pronouns are him for his wife, it is, and um, we just have to be serious about, of course not, I mean, I mean, Tenno and I have been staying inside for, um, what is it now, three weeks? We've been self-quarantining and working from home for the last two or three weeks. So, uh, and the only thing we're doing is going out whenever we, like, if we absolutely have to, to buy some more uh, supplies. So, everyone, take care of yourselves in these times. So, the person who showed the contents of the file was Yatagarasu. Yatagarasu, the organization. Quite a few keywords are popping in the, up in this mystery. The murder in my office. The return of the great thief, Yatagarasu. Looking back, I can't say I didn't see it. I didn't see these events coming. Hey, it's fine. I mean, we're almost uh, we're, we're done almost here, but it is important to like recognize that the severity of this like the situation we're finding ourselves in, um, because. So many people, and it pisses me off, are not taking this situation seriously. Because, I mean, uh, there are places, like, I never hear about people partying here. Like, why the hell would you go to a fucking house party? There's a fucking plague around. Ugh, pisses me off. Sorry. Uh, for they were heralded by the incident again, did, began to occur two days ago. And that concludes the first chapter. Oh, I hate this next case, but it's, I mean, it's it's my least favorite case of this uh, game, but... <laughs> uh, it's amazing. So, we are not going to do any more of that today. There we go. So, I hope you've enjoyed this, um, because I certainly do. My throat is not enjoying it though, because my throat is hurting quite a lot. Um, but that's just how it is. So, um, all right, take care. And thank you for joining us today. And I uh, hope you'll have a nice evening. So, um, next stream is on Wednesday, of course. We are continue with this. I hope you will all join me for that. I just love this game. It's so good. And uh, you're going to be seeing, sadly, that my favorite character in this game is not introduced in this next case. Uh, she comes along later. And I think that is the main reason I don't like this next case, because we don't have my favorite. Like, it takes it goes further in before I get introduced to my favorite character. <laughs> so, yeah, staying inside and playing games now is the probably the best thing you can do, but like, remember to take care of yourselves. It is, um, these are dire times and we have to take it seriously.